Thank you. How are you? It's been a long time. Please. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Natalia. Um, I got the privilege to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to um, have you with us today. Thank you. Uh, because you're a busy girl. What are you doing with 3,000 gigs at the web? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought I was busy um, a year ago. Uh, now it's uh, uncomparable to how busy this year has been. Uh, and actually, if you asked me this question a year, precisely about a year ago, I would probably, uh, if you told me if that I was here today uh, speaking at the web conference, I would laugh because I was um, so far away in, um, in my 20s, so far away from, uh, from this world, and um, I was very busy. I started a charity called Naked Heart Foundation to benefit children in Russia when I was 22, in, back in 2004. And uh, I did really well uh, working very hard on raising funds for my charity. But then when I was turning 30, it's something... It's a catastrophe. It seems so hard for you to turn 30. <laughs> well, it... Um, I think at every, at every stage you get... Uh, you, uh, that every 10 years, I guess, you rethink the last 10 years and how you lived them and what you have done. And uh, I, I believe that this 30-year... Um, gap that you reach, it's um, everything that you've done before, it's kind of, you can take risks, you can have fun, you can um, Tell test. me about the beginning, how do you come from, um, like, start at the very beginning, so you're in Russia, mm. and, and how do you become a supermodel, because I was actually driving yesterday in Paris, and you're all over the place, you have mm. like, there are billboards with your face everywhere. So, how okay. do you go from Russia to...? Well, I, I, I was born in, um, in a big industrial city called Nizhny Novgorod, in a, in, a, in a very suburban part of it, very poor neighborhood. Uh, most of people worked at the factory that lived in the area, so a lot of crime. If it's, it, it was not a very nice neighborhood. Plus, um, my... Um, my, my, my mother was a single mother raising me and my children, Aksana, who was born with um, cerebral palsy and um, deep case of autism. So I, um, I, I, I was uh, taking care of my sister since I was six years old, helping my mom. I started working when I was 11. Um, and then, age 15, when I, I, I actually went on my own and started my own uh, business and took care of myself, I lived with a friend, uh, and then eventually I was, um, I kind of was led to a modeling agency, and um, then age 17 I moved to Paris to be a model, and uh, it was an incredible opportunity for me to to change, to change my life, and, uh, and not, I mean, quickly, but not quick enough to ruin, to ruin my soul and for me to forget my childhood, I, um, I became very successful. Age 20, I signed a big contract. And you're always almost naked, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, that's... Uh, that's uh, um, that's it's, probably going to change around 40. That's, you know, when I, when I reach 40. It's, yeah. It's, it, yeah it's in, oh, oh, here we go. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> no, it's... Uh, please keep going, Natalia. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a little... Um, yes, don't look there. Look, at, no, look yes, here. Actually, I'm, uh, <laughs> I have don't a, look at the laptop. Okay. <laughs> um, well, what can I tell you? I was... Um, so how is it to become so famous so fast? And, uh, and, and I guess it must be a very, very exciting life. Uh, it was exciting for a short, for a couple of years. I was... Uh, oh, my God. I can't, I can't look at that. <laughs> now you're trying... Now I'm looking at it. Um, I was... Uh, for a couple of years, I really had fun. You know, I enjoyed the success. And, um, but then 
I, uh, I got really around, actually 21, uh, I felt really confused. I didn't understand why this sudden success very quickly. I already also, I got married very young as well, and I had a, a beautiful boy, Lucas, uh, who was baby at the time, and I felt, why am I working? I don't have to work anymore. I would like to stay home being a, being a mother and take care of my children. Uh, well, at the time, one child. Um, something told me to carry on, but I, I was really sad. I didn't understand why I had this experience as a child, why I was um, living this life, and, uh, and now this kind of, in a way, this success was um, sudden, and it was because I was a pretty girl. I, I didn't really like that very much. Because is it, is it, that must be tough to be seen only as a pretty girl. Uh, did well, you feel that? Or? I, I didn't feel that within the industry because I was quite, um, quite opinionated. I, <laughs> I was quite pain in the ass, actually. I, I always gave my opinion, even when I was uh, just beginning. I would sort of tell the photographer, I don't like the picture, you know, can we shoot another one? But um, people who, uh, who were very high in, of the industry, they actually appreciated the fact that I had the character, so I guess it helped me uh, somehow. Anyway, I, I, the way I, when I, when uh, something really important happened in 2004 in my life that changed my life forever, it's a tragedy in Beslan. I don't know if you remember uh, back in 2004 when, um, when uh, Beslan uh, school uh, was um, attacked by terrorists and 186 children died. I was in Moscow at the time uh, for whatever reason, probably partying, I don't remember <laughs> but now anymore. But I sat in front of TV and uh, watched what happened uh, for three days. And it's what I was at the time, what I call very emotionally fertile. Uh, so I, um, so I, I, it really moved me. I realized that I cannot live my life the way I lived for the last few years and that I want to, I want to do something for the children that survived the tragedy. So you decided to move away from, you, you didn't start, stop modeling, you kept doing that? No, of course, what, what was really important for me is that I realized I, I have the industry behind me in order to, to do something for these children, for example. So I, um, I always viewed um, the industry and, and the people I was working with uh, uh, as well as very powerful people. So I thought, you know, these powerful people can do something. I, um, on the plane back to New York, I, um, I called Diane von Furstenberg and set up a meeting with her. Now she's a very dear friend of mine. At the time I saw the connection, she was, she's Russian. So anyway, in one month I set up Naked Heart Foundation. I, I uh, organized the event, I raised the funds, and then um, and I raised the funds specifically to build a play park for the children in, uh, in Beslan. Uh, why, why did you choose that play park? Well, I, um, this is actually a good question because um, this, this, particular <laughs> this particular question I asked myself, what would I, li what would I do for these children? What would I do that would be tangible? and would really um, help them to, to, to sort of go on with their life. And I felt that um, when I, the only way I could ask, answer this question is to ask the question myself, what would I, as a, a little girl back in Nizhny Novgorod, what was lacking the most in my life back then? Uh, when I was, my sister, my, my, my lovely sister, she, she kept me on, outside on the street for hours for sometimes six hours at a time, she would refuse to go back home uh, because she loved to walk and she loved to be outside. But for me, it meant shame and, and sort of people looking at us always and, uh, and talking about us. And, and uh, you know, it was, uh, it was an experience that led me to think that if I had somewhere to go with my sister and if I had escape, that would, um, 
that would help me a lot, that would help that little girl a lot. And I felt that somehow maybe this can relate to children who survived the tragedy because there always will be these children who survived that tragedy, that atrocious tragedy. Yes, people will not think of them badly or anyhow, but they will look and they will, the children may feel uncomfortable. So anyway, play. Um, Tim, can you remove that? Slide, there's nothing, so just put Natalia back that on the main screen, that would be great. <laughs> um, so tell me about uh, your foundation, Naked Heart. You, why don't we just remove the slides completely <laughs> um, for now? So tell me about your foundation. Do you, so, so how much did you raise? We, um, we, we started um, building play parks only two years after I set up Naked Heart because I couldn't reach the Beslan government straight away because there was a huge queue of other organizations that more powerful than, of course, mine that wanted to help. Uh, I realized at the time that charity is also competitive business. <laughs> um, so anyway, I was... Um, eventually, I built a play park in my hometown, Nizhny Novgorod. That's where we built our first one. And, uh, well, today we have 90 play parks and playgrounds um, and, uh, How much Russia. did you raise? We raised um, uh, close to uh, 20 million euros. Nice. Congratulations. Thank you. So in the six years, that's, <laughs> that's not bad, I guess. So you're an entrepreneur? I am, and I view charity very much... Uh, as uh, you, It has to be run as business. Uh, in a way you, you know, in a way I put people together, in a way I fundraise so far, I, I never ask people for anything. I hate asking. I sort of, I feel... Well, it looks like you succeed very well in not <laughs> asking and getting 20 million euros. Well, I asked with uh, feeling that I can give something in return. That's what I mean. Yes. And uh, so I've used the uh, industry, as I said before. I, I have a, a biannual fundraising event called um, the Love Ball. And uh, this event uh, is uh, sort of a very glamorous event. It's also uh, the lots, the way I organize auction is, is really important to me. It's always something specific. The last event, I worked on it for two years. I organized the fashion show of um, of haute couture dresses done, that each dress was done under a special theme fairy tale, especially for the Love Ball, and it took me two years to organize it, but it, we raised three and a half million euros at one night. Excellent. Uh, tell me about uh, social networks, because you, you've been using them uh, quite, quite, quite a bit, um, I, I think. Well, <laughs> I, I, now to the... To the why I'm that's the right. That's the right audience to talk about that. By yes, way. I, uh, in back um, back when I was turning thirty, I um, I realized that um, what I I perceived I'm perceived in my own country where I where I worked so hard to to build play parks. I also now the second program of Naked Heart is to help children with special needs like my sister to have a. Um, better childhood, and we, our second program is now more active than the first one. But still, the, the message was not clearly getting out there, because the media that was um, interested in me was more uh, kind of fashion media, uh, and the fashion magazines want to know my beauty routine and what I'm wearing, not really what I do and what I care about. They're, they're really... So, uh, <laughs> so uh, normally when I spoke about Naked Heart, that part would be very short, it would be cut, cut, cut in pieces. Um, and so what I realized is what I was lacking in Russia is uh, voice. I, I, I realized that I need to communicate with people. I need to really tell them uh, what I feel and what I want to do. And uh, if I need to ask for their help, I need to have a way. So that's uh, my sort of enlightenment of 30. <laughs> so how, how can the room uh, help you uh, here? You have a lot of... Um very well connected uh, people here on Facebook and, and, and Twitter. How can we help you raise more funding for your, uh, for your charity? Well, I, um, 
what I want to do now is taking, taking further what, uh, what I've done with, uh, uh, with social media. I've done already quite a lot in the last year. I've organized, um, uh, sort of spontaneously went, uh, because I had 80,000 followers back in July, I, I made a message and uh, I invited people to volunteer and come with me to northern Russia, Krimsk, where floods took uh, hundreds of lives uh, away, and uh, so we built a, um, a camp of volunteers uh, that was run by me, and f uh, f we fundraised, and everything happened through Facebook. Then we opened um, we opened a summer playground for these children, um, and not even playground; it was more like a summer camp with uh, hundred specialists working with the children. Who, children who were lost, who just survived uh, a horrible tragedy, and we entertained the children through the summer while the rain was flooding, and uh, we sort of encouraged the children to stay outside, and it was, we organized um, um, events for them, and it was really, really fun and, um, and very rewarding. And so, of course, I reported everything on my Facebook, um, and uh, even if um, Facebook, uh, I'm not, I don't have as many followers as um, um, people might think I would, in, in knowing that Russia is one of the biggest countries, but uh, 220,000 I have today. Uh, but still, knowing that um, Facebook only has 7 million people then uh, sign up for, that's, that's not bad. But of course, I want to grow my... Um, my, my numbers. Uh, and what is your Twitter name? Uh, Nata Supernova. Nata, N-A-T-A? -A? Yes, Nata. Supernova. Why Supernova? Supernova? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's two of my nicknames. Uh, Supernova was given to me by uh, Mario Testino, who sort of claimed that uh, I took over fashion. So uh, I thought that was be because my... Because on Facebook, I also like, I don't want to just write about bad things. I want to write, of course, about fun and, and, and fun of my industry. And, and, and so, I, Nata is my nickname that my friends give me, and Supernova is my, uh, my professional nickname in fashion industry. Excellent. Anything we haven't covered that you'd like to... Uh, to you uh, well, uh, what I would like to really say is the most, most importantly is that uh, I, uh, I don't have, I, I normally only accept uh, friends' requests from uh, people that I know, but uh, I felt since I've spoken here and uh, as well because I really, I, I believe that I have a position where I can help uh, you entrepreneurs and uh, social media, I can help unite maybe fashion and charity world, and I can play a role. S uh, so I would like to follow you, follow what you do, uh, learn more about social media and about how to become uh, interp entrepreneurship, but uh, entrepreneur, but for charity, of course, um, in order to benefit uh, more Naked Heart Foundation and other charities. And I'll introduce you to Scott Harrison, who spoke here, was um, incredible. Um, in, in what he does with charity, I think I think you like him a lot. Uh, uh, for the the water project. Yeah, charity water. Sure, Do you know him? Course. Yeah, uh, he got 400 business cards as he left uh, the room. Uh, and okay. Natalia, we um, um, we would like. Uh, I, I think you'd like to meet some people as well. You you're not only like sure. uh, being protected in uh, as a supermodel like in in in, uh, in the green room, right? No, so that's not my. Uh, uh, that's not my You're not image. yourself. No. So I think you'll go out, you know, through the main door, and if anyone wants to meet Natalia and, and talk to her, see how uh, we can help her in what she does, um, you don't take any pictures with anyone, right, Eva? You always... I'm happy it. to take a picture with everyone. <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, it was great having you, Natalia. Thank really, you. thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Lloyd. And you check my hand. Can I actually... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Natalia. Thank you very much.